And uh, we're off and rolling. Square cuts, narrow pieces. Hey, this video is in response to a viewer question here on 82 Maple, and it has to do with uh, tips and techniques from a relatively new sawmill user on the topics of making uh, narrow cuts and dealing with short logs. Let's jump into the narrow cuts issue first. So on the Norwood HD 36, the log dog here uh, will really only clamp down to about five inches, five and a half inches maybe, meaning uh, you can't clamp uh, a four inch wide cant. Um, and so I keep a four by six and a four by four right under the deck there to help out with those situations. And, but you know what? Getting the uh, log clamped or the uh, vertical cant clamped is only one part of the issue. And incidentally, if you're wondering why I'm not running this particular piece through the edger back there, that little Wood Miser 100 edger, which I just love, has a maximum thickness capacity of uh, two inches. And this one is closing in on two and a half inches, so it's not going to fit. And I do need a two and a half inch piece of decking for uh, one of the bridges. So here's what we end up doing. Uh, first of all, secure the piece vertically or the small log if that's the case but if it's a vertical piece the other thing you want to do is move the saw head right up against where you're going to commence the cut and pop a little magnetic square underneath now you can see whether you're going to end up with a square cut in this case i'm a little bit fussy where this board is going i need a square cut uh, in a host of other situations, I wouldn't bother. I would just clamp and keep moving. But I'm a little fussy on this one. And then uh, I still found that after I did that, that uh, and the piece was securely clamped, I was not square. So two things. One, I raised this log rest and that got me halfway to square. I was about a good quarter inch, maybe pushing three eighths off square for whatever reason. And uh, then you'll see, I keep some little cedar shakes around and I just pop that in at the top. And you see, I didn't even have to pop the one in at the back. If I went down there more closely, you'd see that there's a little bit of a gap there. This is all I needed to do for this uh, piece of wood, which is about 12 feet long. And uh, we're off and rolling. Square cuts, narrow pieces.
Okay, so for purposes of this little demo, let's pretend that this short log behind me was even shorter than it is. I've got it actually across three bunks here on my Norwood. I had installed an extra bunk to bolster the activity of the log loader over there. Uh, it had actually bent the frame on this Norwood at one point until I put that extra, ordered and put that extra bunk in. But uh, you can actually cut a log uh, that is no more than 52 inches in length. It will span that bunk and that bunk with relative ease, leave a couple of inches sticking over so that you can uh, feel very secure in uh, uh, your, your log rests doing what they need to do. However, what you give up on this, if you have the hydraulic version, is you give up your hydraulic tow board. Now, what I intentionally did as I was coming in with the excavator is loaded the small end up here. Why? Because this is the end that I'm going to have to lift so that I can make sure that the pith, the dead center of the log, is an equal distance from the bunk on both ends of the log. It's a little tough to see this end because of the uh, seal coat that I had used. And so, and this is a pretty exaggerated example of taper. It's, uh, this log measures, as you um, may have noticed, about 14 inches down there, and we go down to this end and we've got 19 inches. So how much do I need to lift? Well, technically, you take 19 minus 14, uh, and you have five inches, so you cut that in half. I should have had to lift that about two and a half inches, but this really is an exaggerated example of an almost worst case scenario on a small log. And uh, so I had initially a one and a half plus a three quarter inch piece down there, which put me at two and a quarter, and it was too much. Uh, so I pulled the three quarter inch piece out and uh, it's perfect there. I've just checked the measurements and it's give or take uh, nine and a half or nine and five eighths from uh, the bunk to the pith on either end of the log. Back to my intentional positioning. So to, uh, I need to be able to lift the small end of the log without having access to my tow board. So you've seen me use the log turner. That's an excellent lifting device. And as a backup, uh, the log dog works perfectly. You'll also have noticed, although I think the log would have missed it, I had this uh, log stop here raised. Uh, I think that's more of a re reflex reaction because uh, due to my own personal carelessness, I actually had a log come off this side of the mill one time uh, because I hadn't raised that. In this case, it wouldn't have made any difference, but I felt fairly confident in my ability to get that log dog under there and just lift that because I'm backstopped by the log stops over here. And uh, so to lift this enough to get that three quarter inch of material out and I'm ready to cut. Uh, so there you have it. Hope this uh, you found this useful. If I opened up more questions than I answered, don't hesitate to give me a call. And I'm off to do some happy cutting with uh, this little, little unit, uh, which again, I define as any day I can get a, a, a straight cut, uh, no waves, and maintain eight fingers and two thumbs. It's a happy cutting day for me. Happy cutting to you.